The name of this area means place of water. But Matsikama in the Western Cape is on the brink of a disaster as a drought which hit the province three years ago became progressively worse. And with the water gone, there are fears the wine produced here will soon dry up too. The area gets its water from the Clan William Dam, which was only 8% full when Eyewitness News visited the town. The dam feeds the farms through a canal system. The main canal extends 260 kilometers and has side branches totaling a further 60 kilometers. It supplies water to the Bulzuk Dam near Rondeberg as well as to farmers from Kukanab and Ebenezer. The pressure on the Clan William Dam, coupled with a drought, is having a devastating effect on the farms in the area. We pay every year for a 12 cubic um, water and that is what, what we have to spend. Uh, water we have to use. But at the moment, due to the drought, we only get um, 1,700 cubic. And on a normal year, if the dam is full, we only also get 9,700 to 9,000 cubic because the dam isn't big enough to give us all the farmers here the 12,000 cubic. Friedendal is known for being one of the province's biggest grape producing areas, feeding some of the biggest wine cellars. But driving through the town, it's hard to imagine the industry thriving as the effects of the drought tighten. As you can see b b behind me, this is one of the vineyards I chose to, um, to leave this year. Didn't give it any water. And um, yeah, the effect is, <laughs> uh, as you can see, it's, it's, it, it doesn't look good. Um, but we had to make a decision this year and uh, uh, we, we chose to leave all our, our the, the lowest margin crops. We chose to, to, to not water this year so we can focus on table grapes and, and raisins. Um, Baron Foster only received 14% of his water supply this season, which resulted in him not being able to water 30% of his usual crop, most of it wine grapes. Well, table grapes, firstly, uh, uh, there's, there's a much higher uh, profit for us uh, in table grapes as well as raisins. And um, the other thing is we, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, more job creation with table grapes and, uh, and raisins. Uh, where win uh, where uh, vineyards, as you can see there, the, um, we have harvesting machines, so there's not a lot of uh, job creation with, with vineyards uh, specifically. Farmers and sellers are worried about the effect this is going to have on the wine industry, something that may not be visible immediately, but the long-term impact is a worrying one. The immediate fears is the cash flow of our producers because at the moment it's 50% harvest and then the income for the next 18 months will be 50% of, of what he's used to and he's got a lot of payments to do and we don't know how will we overcome the next 18 months. The wine sellers that's making the wine is under the same threat because they will get only half of a harvest and then your your production cost and your annually cost will double because you're putting through the facility half of the tonnage that can pay for the operations. And we may lose uh, some of our uh, wine cellars as well. I think if we just look at what our harvest expectations are, we currently considering in total, um, not just in the Western Cape, a decrease of about 20%. Obviously, according to certain production areas like Fred and Dahl, there's close to 50 to 60 percent decreases expected. But an area like the Northern Cape is actually currently uh, expecting a very similar harvest than the previous year. Um, so we see a bit of a mixed bag of variation. Um, but if we want to equate that to value, I think we're looking at farm gate losses of close to 700 million rand just in physical income not going, going towards the farm or the farming business. With massive losses to the farm industry, many of the workers here are worried about their future. The workers will be affected the most at this stage because they will be laid off for work or either work short time. Uh, I must say the farmers are really concerned about their workers and they're trying to keep the most of them still in service. But if I say that, you also 
realize that it's more than just out of work. It's not able to give food to your children. It's children not being able to go to school. So as far as that, the social impact is, is really huge. With the immense loss in revenue in the farm industry here in the Matsikama area, extreme measures are being taken in an attempt to keep as many workers as possible. Some farmers have resorted to extreme measures by removing vineyards that's likely to produce a low crop yield and replacing it with an alternative product in order to pay for workers' wages during and after harvest. So you can see um, we have grapes um, at the side and in the middle of the two vineyards uh, we have piconuts. So what we started to do is because of the low price we're getting for our wine grapes, uh, we needed, needed to go into um, a different different product to be able to pay the bills and able to keep up with the um, with the workers and everything. So we decided to plant piconuts. So what we did is we can't afford, um, no farmer in this area can afford to just take out the whole block of vineyards and replace it with uh, any other cultivar. The Matsikama municipality is helping many businesses to become self-sustainable and is taking measures to implement water restrictions to help fight the crisis in the area. However, it might be too late for the farming community of Friedendal and surrounding areas. But for the cultural sector, you know, it's, it's, it's disastrous in, in the sense that um, at the end of March this year, um, they're going to face a day zero, so to speak. So they're, gonna, they're not going to get any water. And that will ultimately affect the municipality directly because 80% um, of the agriculture, you know, is, is within Matsikama. Farmers and workers in the area are worried about their futures. With no end in sight for the drought, many are forced to find other sources of water or risk losing it all.